Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Alex here. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for coming and supporting my video. I'm um, just doing a little introduction here before all these videos, and I just wanted to really show my appreciation for you guys coming on to the channel. It really means a lot, um, and I just really hope that you guys drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And without further ado, I'm not going to hold you any longer. Thank you again, and let's click to the video. What is going on, guys? Today we are continuing the series of the top 10 plus some extras with the cornerback position. Now this one might be a slightly longer video because there are a lot of corners in this class. So I'm going to preface this again. These This list is not final. I'm having actually a list come out um, after all this is over with basically every single thing that I would change, all the big changes and stuff. So keep your ears posted out for that. Obviously so far this um, series hasn't hit too much at home with you guys, but I honestly, I'm just pumping out content for you guys to at least look at. At least you guys can see my thought process. So when we continue the seven round mocks, then you guys can um, at least understand my thinking process. So obviously, uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. Um, please give me some ideas about what you guys want to see. You know, uh, I'm trying to make content for you guys. That's also fun for me. So if we can find a nice little Venn diagram on that, that would be absolutely wonderful. So without further ado, I'm going to kick this off because we got a long list to go. Um, first round, guys, we don't really need to talk about them too much. Uh, just look at the first round uh, evaluations if you want an in-depth analysis. Sean Wade, my first cornerback on the board, really solid talent. Literally the only reason Clemson beat Ohio State in the playoffs is because Sean Wade left. So, I mean, he's, a, he's that much of a game changer. And he's played primarily slot until like this year now, so... We'll see how he does on the outside, but slot corner has immense value in the NFL still. So without even if he sucks on the edge, like keeping him as an amazing slot corner would be invaluable in the NFL. Chris Harris Jr., I mean, he has the ability to go outside, but like obviously one of the best shutdown slot corners ever. So continuing, Patrick Sertan, um, just insane talent. Really, really solid. I I look back on my old draft notes when I was just doing this for fun. And um, I never put down cornerbacks ever on a board, ever. And Patrick Sir's tan came up, and in all caps was instincts. So this guy, he's just super, super good when it comes to feeling how the route is going to be. And I think, honestly, he could easily take Sean Wade's spot. Easily. I got to watch him this year, though, because he's not going to have his partner in crime, Trayvon Diggs. So we'll see how he does. Obviously, same thing with Sean Wade. Again, this is way too early. So... Obviously, once like September rolls around, we're going to do another one of these because all the draft um, analysis is going to come out, and then I'll have more time to view these. So, I mean, view all the games and stuff. So, continuing, um, again, we talked about this in the first round. Paulson Adebo, he's been in first round talk for like three years now. Uh, just solid overall corner from Stanford. Obviously not the best. Um, he's not the most consistent guy, but he's somebody who you can probably rely on for the most part, if you have safety coverage over the top, that'd be great. But Paulson Adebo, solid corner, you know, um, first round quality, obviously. But I think that by the time um, the season starts, he's not going to be number three. He's probably going to be number four or five on this list. But um, again, he's had first round pedigree for a very long time. You don't get that by being a scrub. So continuing, Caleb Farley, um, my biggest riser ever, actually, 99 on my original list up to 32 actually uh, quick little spoiler Tutu Atwell might be the biggest jump but no actually I don't think so Caleb Farley made a over 60 what 67 spot jump um, this guy allowed 26.0 uh, passer rating like that's much worse than just throwing the ball in the dirt every time it's thrown his way so that is pretty damn special he is a, he's a great talent, six foot two as well, redshirt junior. He could have came out like this last year and probably been one of the best corners in the draft. Um, again, he could easily be possibly the first cornerback on the board if he continues his success. So, this list is this probably this list right here is the most subject to change. So, I'll just like leave out some more there for when we do a little update video and show you a little more in depth about what, uh, what I did with Caleb Farley. But next, Elijah Molden. Um, I got to give the credit to uh, Mel Kuyper here. He's the one who opened my eyes to him. And I mean, I'm a fan of Washington corners. I don't like Washington per se, 
But um, Washington corners always, to me, are, like, better investments than any other Pac-12 corner. I mean, here I am saying Paulson Adebo, but Paulson Adebo is kind of a special corner. Um, but I just, like, think Washington produces the best corners out of the Pac-12. Regardless, Elijah Molden, um, really good lockdown corner. I think that he has uh, a lot of potential, and i got to watch more of him. I'm really excited to watch more of him, at the, like, as a matter of fact, so... Uh, somebody who I've watched a bit of tape on um, is Israel Mukwamu. Really talented corner. Could even be higher than this. All these. This is a pretty good uh, top of the corner class. Uh, picked off Jake Fromm three times. You know, like that just doesn't happen ever in one game. Not even in, like his career in one game. So um, he has the frame six foot four, right? <laughs> Let's six foot three. Okay, big deal. Okay, one inch. Um, six foot three. Has the coverage skills to pick off the most like careful passer in college football, so I mean he easily can move up this list. Um, I just gotta see how he does again. Like gotta see how he does this year. Tyson Campbell and Eric Stokes. I'm gonna be on. I I've seen Tyson Campbell. Really, I I like him. Uh, obviously, I put him end of the second. This is of course subject to change, but um, Tyson Campbell is just somebody who's much more consistent. I think he get torched sometimes, but I mean. Gotta see how he does this year, man. Gotta see how he does. I think he can progress this year. Same thing with Eric Stokes. I haven't seen enough of Eric Stokes, to be honest. These two guys I do need to watch a bit more of, but um, Eric Stokes, again, I, I'm just kind of a, like not very knowledgeable about him. But, I mean, I don't really see too many people destroying Georgia, so I think that might be a little bit of a toast to their cornerback and core. Again, I mean, they have also um, their safety. I, I don't... Richard LeCount? Yeah. Back there, I mean, he could also be responsible for that because we all know that safeties are playing a bigger and bigger role in um, the spread offenses nowadays. Regardless, next, Asante Samuel Jr. I've watched some games, and he has really tight coverage, but he likes to grab a bit as well as he gets mossed pretty often. So, I mean, he has the potential there, but I have my I have my doubts. So we got to see how he does this year. Got to see how he does. I hope I hope that he can rise up on this list too. Honestly, he, he obviously has the bloodline of Sante Samuel. So going on, uh, Darian Kendrick. I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea who the hell this guy is. I just saw he's from Clemson and he was higher than where I put him. So uh, I was like, you know what? I'll give this guy some credit. I'm not gonna say he's a scrub. Uh, again, I haven't heard any buzz about this guy. Like I knew a, a lot of buzz about a bunch of other corners who were good in this class, but not this guy. Next, Marco Wilson, somebody I'm more familiar with. Um, he's kind of a playmaker for me. I kind of like him. But, again, nothing too consistent. He can get torched, he can get mossed. But somebody who, like, you'll just see him make plays left, right, and center. So, kind of like a really shitty Marcus Peters, I, can, I guess, if you want, like, a really early comp. But I got to watch more Marco Wilson. I love watching Florida anyways. Um, so, again... We'll see what happens, and like after all this is over, when I make my updates video, and then obviously I'm going to be continuing to watch more after the updates video. Next, Kerry Vincent Jr. Um, never even heard of this guy to be honest with you, but he's from LSU. I gave him some credit, but it's like you have Derek Stingley there, like he's able to get some some like spotlight on him, but Kerry Vincent Jr. can't. Kind of sketchy to me. So he's always been like the third cornerback. Now he's going to be the second. So I'm a little bit worried about him. So we'll see how he does. Uh, oh, boy, Lenore. Uh, let, let, let's have some fun here. Diamodre, Diamodore. Diamodore? Whatever. Lenore out of uh, Oregon. Now, I've seen him uh, get torched quite a few times, but he has, he has some instinct skills. I think that he makes up a little bit more with his speed than anything. But, um, yeah, I mean... He has tools to work with. That's all I can say. He has tools to work with. Um, again, he might be being helped out by Javon Holland being behind him the entire time. But, I mean, Lenore, he's honestly, he's not, he ain't scrub. Um, he's obviously fourth round quality for me. So, he ain't no scrub. But he ain't, I would not be going in with a need and saying Lenore is going to fill it. I'm not very confident in that. Jace Horn, South Carolina, um, cornerback two for me, like he's cornerback two on South Carolina for me. Some people have it flipped, but I don't. 
Um, I mean, I need to watch more of this guy, but I feel like people try to pick on Israel Muguamu and they just get picked. But I don't see really picks coming from Jace, Jace Horn, and I think they target him more often than they do Muguamu since he's a freaking ball hawk. So I'm a little bit worried, but whatever. TJ Carter, I've seen this guy quite a few times. I like watching Memphis. Brady White's one of uh, my guys that I really like watching in the draft, even though I don't like the fact he's going to be pretty much damn near 25 after the draft, but whatever. Let's not even talk about that. Um, TJ Carter, he's solid. Um, I should probably talk to Raw Rice. Um, if you guys haven't checked that video out, please do. Uh, I should probably talk to him about it because he's played uh, against TJ Carter, or at least he has um, good friends who played against TJ Carter. But, I mean, Memphis's corners don't do a shitty job whatsoever. They're always they're always there. So, I like I like TJ Carter. Um, obviously, I think that Memphis getting chewn up a bit by most teams um, in the passing game is kind of a testament to the fact that they probably don't have the best secondary. But I haven't seen too many faults with TJ Carter. Gotta see. Tyreek Johnson, this is a guy who I have absolutely no idea who he is, and I think he could be the biggest riser by far this year. Um, Tyreek Johnson, I can see him being a first-round prospect, former five-star corner, the Ohio State University. You know how we pump out corners, man. Um, great coaching there, and I think Tyreek Johnson could be the next great Ohio State cornerback along with Sean Wade. I cannot wait to see him play this year. So going on to the next, Keith Taylor, again, Washington guy. Don't really know anything about him, but using the pedigree to justify. Um, next, Trey Dean. Uh, Trey Dean, I've watched him a little bit. He seems a little bit of a liability in coverage, but Florida keeps him on this list because Florida has good coaching. I think they can give him the tools he needs, and if he has a good enough coaching, then uh, NFL can just continue to fine-tune him, and he could be a solid backup. Next, Roger McCreary. To be honest, I don't know who he is, but Auburn likes to produce some solid cornerbacks. So I'm excited to watch some more. If Roger McCreary is going to be a starter this year, I would love to see him play uh, one-on-one versus some more stud type of wide receivers. Um, and if he does well, that's great. Lastly, Ambry Thomas um, out of Michigan. Again, uh, just going off of reputation here. He's a senior born in 1999, which is really interesting. Uh, since I was born in 01, and I'm a freshman, you know? I mean, going to be a sophomore, but it's just, I don't really think of, like, senior. Do you think of, like, redshirt juniors or redshirt sophomores as people born in 99, you know? Not really, um, not really uh, seniors. So, that's the video, guys. I know, sorry. It's lagged on a little bit, and I don't really know too much about these guys at the end, but um, that's all subject to change. Please stick with me through this. It's just fun. I mean, I'm just like, it's just fun learning about these guys, watching them on tape, and then seeing like, holy shit, I should put Tutu Atwell a lot higher. He's very fun to watch, even though he's 154 pounds. But regardless, let me know what you guys want to see, because that's, uh, I'm, I'm not running out of ideas, but I don't want to just become a mock draft machine. I want to hear what you guys want to hear about. Uh, Campbell Wolf suggested the playoffs thing, and that was a great idea. It's just a little change of pace. So please keep me keep me informed with that. And without further ado, I'm not going to hold you any longer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the far side. Peace.